Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Golden Gloves Chat Show. With me, I've got our special guest, Rodney Berman, CEO. Welcome, Rodney. Well, thank you. Of you. Golden Gloves. Nice of you to join us. Kevin Lorena, our champion boxer. We're going to chat today. We've got a lot to chat about, especially from Rodney and from the champion himself. So, Kevin, from cruiserweight champion, you won a few heavyweight fights. You're the number one bridge of weight in the world. And now the next big exciting news, a WBC interim world title. That's going to happen double down at the Palace on the 25th of November on the Golden Glove Show. And of course brought to you by World Sports Betting and Super Sports. So that's your next big fight, which we're going to talk more about just now. We look forward to it. A very, very exciting news in the WBC. Uh, right now, I'm going to start with you. There's so much been happening behind the scenes. We've been uh, meaning to have this conversation now for a while. Because um, it's up and down. It's, it's a tough job being a promoter, I can imagine. As tough as it is to be a boxer. Because... You, there's so much negotiations going on that people don't know about, and, and you make it happen. So let's start from the beginning, where this started with Kevin with the negotiations. Yeah, just to put it in this perspective so everybody understands, because bottom line is Kevin will be the third South African ever to fight for a WBC yep. world title. It is the interim title. There's a very simple reason why it is the interim title at the moment. The cruiserweight champion of the world, WBC, was Badu Jack. He's relinquished the title. Uh, I think he wants to cement his legacy by fighting in a, in a higher division yeah. and try have four titles. So his objective is now to fight the current world champion, Rosansky, Rosansky. who Kevin Kevin's fought for the fight. right to fight that. Yeah. Kevin is the mandatory. If it materialises, we have agreed... It makes sense for Kevin in various ways, obviously financially uh, and for his for his own legacy. Yeah. To give it to that, so we will step aside to mm. allow that fight to happen. But in world boxing, uh, my belief, uh, all our beliefs are that if that fight does happen, Buddy Jack would probably beat the current champion, Rosansky, and probably... Not, not, this is conjecture. He'd probably then vacate the title because he'd fulfil his legacy. Now, if Kevin was just the, the leading uh, bridge weight in the world at that stage, he would then have to fight for the title. But under WBC rules, suppose it's the same in all the organisations, if there is an interim champion and the... the title becomes vacant, the interim champion is automatically elevated to the title. This is the reason for this fight. Having said that, it's not a walk in the park, uh, and my hat's off to Kevin, because he always, he's one of those fighters, you put a fight in front of him, he takes the fight. Senat Gushi, if you go, you'll talk to Kevin more mm. about that. You look at his record, and as I say, it's no walk in the park. He's in for a fight, but one thing I'm, I'm sure of, Kevin Arena, whether it's because there's a vacant title at the end of the line or whether he's got to fight Badu Jack or whatever, he is going to be the third world WBC champion that South Africa's ever had. And of course, the guys you're talking about, the, the great fighters, is Sugar Boy Melinda and Dingan Tabela, which have won two world titles. And the WBC is a massive organisation, always has been. And you've won so many of the other smaller titles, and now there's a big title fight for you. Excited about it? Most definitely. There's a there's a big carrot dangling for me, and also another opportunity to to create history and uh, write a legacy. You know, when I when I started out the sport, it was to to make history mm -hmm. and to defy the odds. And this is just another opportunity and another step in the right direction to become the third WBC world champion from South Africa. And, and coming, coming from your background, it's quite incredible your career, because, and we say this, every time you get a big shot at a world, world title, you keep winning. I mean, you were a rugby player, you weren't really going to be a boxer, you never had an amateur career, and you've, you've done so fantastically well for a guy. We just thought originally when you started boxing, you were a good athlete, which you've always been. And then you just got better and be, uh, better progressively, I mean, now you're fighting for flipping the WBC title. It's amazing. Uh, let's talk about him. Senat Gashi from Germany. Gashi and Gashi, he likes to call himself. 27 and 3, 26 uh, by knockout. That's a pretty impressive knockout record. 
When you look at his knockout record, obviously you've looked at him on box deck and we'll talk about if you look at his fights. Does that scare you that 26 knockouts or is it it's another opponent? No, it's, you respect it. You respect it. doesn't, it doesn't scare, scare you. You respect, uh, you respect that. It's a, it's a phenomenal KO ratio, but yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, he's in there with me. Yeah. And uh, yes, he's fought Chisora, he's fought Tuckham. Yes, and, uh, he's fought Tuckham. Schwartz, I'm Schwartz, yes. Yes. But I'm different to those three too. I'm my own person, I'm Kevin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm excited for the challenge. Gashi is a credible opponent, big KO ratio. And he lost to big names, so somebody that needs to be respected. But to reiterate uh, on your question, am I scared? Most definitely not. Yeah, actually, that's 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 a wrong word. Somebody like me should use. Yeah. Because if you're scared to fight, people actually ask me that question. Were you scared to fight? I said, No, I wasn't scared to fight. If you put in the preparation, you get that confidence. Yes. And I mean, you do exactly the same. Obviously, I followed your whole career as well because you put in such hard work. You, you definitely not scared. You want to get it there and prove I yourself. think we're always going to respect the man. Yeah, I respect is the right I think uh, you know Brian more than anyone. You've had multiple types of victories. Thanks, and sir. You respect the man opposite mm. you, but it, it, by no means are you scared of him. Mm. You know, I, I'm a heavyweight world title fighter against Daniel Dubois. I wasn't scared of him. Yeah. And there was a, a percent, a, a segment on that fight where we are all over the, all over victors, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I'm not scared of no man, but I respect every man who laces it up. And, and that respect is what drives me to work hard mm. and to, to go on and, and, and try to beat them because I respect them. Mm. So had I not respected them, I would I'd be not training, I'd be the guy who's lazy, yeah. who doesn't give a shit, but that's not me because yeah. I respect them. Well, well said, I think we actually brought up a good word there which we've never discussed before, is scared. Are you scared to be a fighter? And you're not scared if you've put in the work. Mm. If, if you decide to be a professional fighter and you put in the hard work like you do, then there's definitely no such thing as scared. I think nerves also comes into play because you're nervous, not because of the man across you, you're nervous for the people around you, your team, your future. Mm -hmm. You want to do well for yourself, yes. you don't want to let yourself down. But by no means are you scared, like you'll know as that bell goes, you're on, it's on, yeah. it's yeah. on, it's on. For sure. So I think the key, the key word that we both spoke about now is respect. I wholeheartedly respect my opponents, mm -hmm. but uh, when the bell goes, it's business and respect is out the window, mm -hmm. we need to maul him and to win. For sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the, the weight a little bit, Kevin. So you went from a, a cruiserweight, you've beaten quite a few heavyweights, and now it's breacher weight. You, you seem like this is the kind of weight for you. In, in all the chats we've had over the years, you seem quite comfortable at, at around 100 kilograms, yes. and this is the 100 kilogram. And I think this division, we spoke about it outside before this meeting with Rodney as well. This can become a massive uh, organization and division. Because, I mean, look at the cruiserweights. It started, the heavyweight said, nah, I won't make it. Then you had Holyfield, then you had Usak. And the cruiserweights became a massive division. And I think the same can happen with this division. What do you think? Well, 100%, 100%. I think, um, obviously, it's, you're testing the waters, but it, it only makes sense if you look at boxing, how the weight divisions jump. I mean, if you look at the difference between your weight division, junior lightweights and lightweights, I think it's like a two or three kilo two swing. Kilos, two kilos, yeah. Then you look at cruiserweight and heavyweight, there's a massive gap of like 10 kilograms. Mm. So this is a perfect bridge to bridge yeah. the gap. And I think it's a division that will hold substance the minute that there's a credible champion. Mm. Um, God willing, I become world champion. I plan to fight the bigger names, the heavyweights who are coming down to create hype. It would be ideal to fight a buddy Jack, who, who is a big name in the world, promoted by the Saudis. But then there's also guys like Tony Ballou, who've had a dig at saying they want to come back at Bridgeweight. What's stopping Usyk, Murat Kassiv, who's a cruiserweight gone up mm. to heavyweight, who just lost at heavyweight, to come down and fight for the Bridgeweight World title? Mm. Big fights are made, and, and I think the division is made with all depends on who the champion is. Mm. That's the credibility of the belt. I mean, if there was a champion who couldn't sell tickets and was the WBC world champion, how big is that belt? It's not that big. Mm. But when a USAP wins a belt or when a big name wins a belt, the credibility of the belt grows even more. Yeah, so sure. the WBC alone is a massive organization, yeah. which I'm proud to be a part of. But our, our aim to win this world title and to grow this division and to be the pinnacle and the star of this division. Mm. And also, it also looks nice for me as an outsider, just as a commentator, watching you fight a guy like your size. Mm. Like you, you fought Riyad Murray in May, and it, it was brilliant because you were so evenly matched mm. with the height and the, the muscles and the size. And now it's going to be the same thing with Gashi. I mean, he's a similar age to you, 
It's going to be a similar weight, obviously, similar height. So, so that for me makes good fights. It just evens it out more. Yeah. Because the heavyweights today are just like stupid size. Yeah, the Fury is at six foot eight, six foot eight, which is a big disadvantage isn't it? for a smaller heavyweight like yourself. Of course, I mean they they got the weight advantage, they got the height advantage. Mm -hmm. We do have to work extra hard to get on the inside. But obviously, with skills, you, you can beat you those can, guys. You, you just got to you got to believe in yourself and listen to your trainer and, and work hard to do it. I'm not I'm not done with heavyweight. What I'm saying yeah, is not that's, 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 uh, Mr. Mr. Suleiman from the WBC, he recognizes anyone, anybody within the heavyweight division, top 20 to fight for, for the, the bridgeweights, bridge if they're small enough or light enough, should I say. So there's nothing stopping you of becoming the bridgeweight world champion and then challenging for the heavyweight yeah. title for, uh, further down the line. Because yes. at the end of the day, that's also the pinnacle of boxing. Yeah, for that's sure. where the money that's lies the in money. boxing. And that's what I want to do. Um, so we have a plan, yeah. but right now, obviously, there's, the only focus is becoming the WBC Bridgeway World. But like you said, heavyweight is not out there, the question. Never. Never. I think it's not a a Bridgeway is a heavyweight. You're 100 kilograms. Yeah. So We're big guys, and I think it's guys. all about yeah. opportunity yeah. and offerings. I mean, yeah. if you had to offer me a massive heavyweight fight now against one of the top five guys in the world, would my trainer, would my promoter turn it down? I don't think so, because I wouldn't. Mm. Because we know what life is. And, and it's a short career, the fight game, isn't yeah. it? I mean, sport is, is a short career. You've got to take every opportunity you get, you know. Mm. I think um, boxing is very short-lived. Mm. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, you're already, a, you're already a, a veteran. At 30, yeah. At 31. I mean, what, 31 pro, 30 profiles, whatever it is. Yeah, and, and so what are you looking at? How many more years would you say? I don't even want to put a... At time now, okay, but okay. one thing, Brian, I honestly feel I'm in my prime now in terms of strength, maturity, mm -hmm. and skills. Mm -hmm. So let's see how long we can ride this wave. Remember, I started boxing late. So for the first, I'd say, four or five years of my career was... So you basically a young 31-year-old. I'd say, in the yeah. boxing world. Yes, because boxing. I never had that 100 or 50 or 100 amateur fights. Yeah, sure. That causes damage mm -hmm. or can shorten your pro career. I came in with one profile at the age of 19. Mm. And now we fast forward, what, 11 years later, I've had 31 profiles. So technically, I've only been in 31 fights mm. in my life. In your life, yeah, yeah. Which is not a lot. Which is not actually a lot, no. So yeah. I believe, obviously, we're learning every day. And we, we, we're working to become better. But I believe I'm in my peak now. And let's see how long we can run it out for. Heavyweight's too mature. Look at the heavyweight world champions, the ages of them. If I'm not mistaken, we're 38 years old. I think 36, so, yeah. 38, you got Joshua, okay, he was a world champion, 34, Tyson Fury is 36, uh, Zilla Zhang is uh, late 30s, mm -hmm. Joe Joyce was just approaching 40. Can Usa beat the Tyson Fury? And we've had this conversation before. Uh, I don't know. It's a tough one, but it's a tough one. If, if anybody can, can skill, if, it's, if there's one guy you want to beat him, it's Usa. Yeah. But the Fury yeah, is sure. a competitive fighter, but he's got to take care of that MMA guy now. Yeah. And then apparently they're going to fight in December, let's see. Yeah, I hope so. I hope yeah. Tyson Fury wins it with Spain to battle. Kevin, yeah, so great. Double down at the Palace on the 25th of November on the Golden Glove Show. The, the Empress Palace fans love you. You've been the golden boy of boxing for many years at Empress and, and for Golden Gloves. And uh, yeah, I'm sure people can't wait to see you start down there. When, when you walk out of that uh, challenge room and, and that, what, what, what is the feeling like when you see all these people are there, you're worshipping you? It's surreal, and I, I put a post up the other day, it's electric. You know, I'm very fortunate, it's intimate, but it's electric. The guys that are turning up for me and paying the ticket prices to come watch me and are showing up and making noise, chanting for me, I appreciate them. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, boxing is entertainment, but those same people are the people that are behind me and are my driving yeah. force. And, and, want me to and they appreciate it as well, because... People are not stupid there in the boxing bunker. People have paid their tickets for their tickets to watch you fight or me fight. They know if you train hard or not. So when you get in there, you're such a well-conditioned athlete that you're giving it back to them. I so respect they're, the they're not wasting their money. I respect, I respect, I respect the sport. I respect the opponents. I respect the people who are paying their hard-earned money to come watch me. I respect the people that can't make it out there because they cannot afford it, but they're there to watch me on television mm. or watch the highlights. I respect the boxing fraternity. And... Um, that's that's where the nerves come in. It's not letting those people down. Mm. You're not letting yourself down. Yeah. So it's not a thing I fear. But yeah, I respect um, all the supporters. I mean, it's electric. I mean, I was just thinking about it now. I can't wait for that ring walk again. We're going to sell out again. We're on our way to selling out. And uh, I can promise you we will all sell out. Mm. And we've got six weeks to go. I'm going to give it two weeks and we will be sold out. 
and I appreciate everybody. The ticket prices have been increased a hell of a lot, obviously, because it's a WBC World Title fight, and it's it's big for Golden Gloves. And it's, it's fight. an extensive fight to put together, because you guys are fighting for an interim world title. Exactly, and there's obviously an undercard mm -hmm. you need to take care of. Um, I appreciate the people who have paid for their first row and the people who have paid for the last row. Wholeheartedly, I appreciate every single one of them, and let's sell out and let's make history. Well, what, what can you tell the viewers out there what you're going to do to Gashi? What job are you going to do to him? Then I'm going to talk rugby to you next. I'm going to put up a great performance. I'm going to put up a Kevin Arena display. One that is my best, the best is yet to come. And what I, one thing I can say, I respect Gashi, but come the 25th of November, he's going to know he's in there with a different animal. And he's at 30 fights and only been stopped once. So. Yeah, he, he, listen, he's got a phenomenal record. I respect him. He couldn't be, Chisora didn't stop him. And I think uh, Schwartz didn't stop in my contest or something. Uh, yeah, it was a disqualification, yeah. so it wasn't a stoppage. One thing I can say is I'm coming prepared. I know he's coming prepared. This is strictly business, nothing personal. Gashi's, we've always liaised throughout my whole career. He's always given me a thumbs up and, and vice versa. But now we're going to fight. So the respect is out the window and we're there to rock, rock each other and rule each other. And uh, I plan on becoming the WBC. So we just see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, um, before we finish our conversation, it's been a lucky chat. Thanks. Uh, this is what I want for, for South Africa. On the 28th of October, which is quite soon, so it's a good time to talk about it, the Boca must win. Yes. We're gonna beat, if it's going to be New Zealand, we must beat New Zealand. And of course, you winning the WBC title on the 25th of November. Wouldn't that be great for the country? Phenomenal. All I mean, world champions. we got to rally behind the Boca. You know, the Do I need to get your autograph now before you beat Gashi? <laughs> I think I've got you so, Am I? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we rally behind the Boca. You know, the Springboks, if I'm not mistaken, on the same day South Africa play England in the semis, the Proteas also play in England. Oh, so, yes, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, we've got to rally behind the Proteas, we've got to rally behind the Boca, and then obviously all roads lead to the final, let the Boca take care of business, and I promise you I'll follow suit and become the Great. WBC World Champion. Well, there you go, from Kevin Arena, the future WBC World Champion. From me, Brian Mitchell, thank you for watching.